What is up guys, Green and Pride here coming at you with another big video. Gonna unpause it here. Um, I'm doing a duo lane. I'm usually used to being by myself, but it's nice to mix it up. Nice to learn how to duo. The replay is doing that hair thing again. I think that goes away probably. It went away last time. Now, they're gonna be a little aggressive here. I'm kind of just in a farming mindset. It, it always sucks, you know, when you're going into like a MOBA and you're like, I'm just going to farm in the early game and your opponent just keeps poking you. It does kind of hurt them money-wise, but it's still annoying on the mental. Me and Warden versus a Haze and a Gargoyle chick. Little Ivy action. Decide to poke back. Try to get close to me. I'm doing a two max first. I usually always max two first. I love getting the spirit damage on your bullets. I think it's a huge power spike. Except, especially when you buy the uh, spirit item that shreds bullet resist when you deal spirit damage. So then it's like a double whammy. I put a point into my crow so that it bounces around. I want to say me and my lane mate, Warden, are probably mechanically maybe both a little better than our than our uh, opponents here, but I think they play together better than we do. I think they're definitely, they were on the same page for sure most of the lane, where me and Warden were kind of just both solo laning at the same time, kind of. I buy a high velocity magazine, get my bullets to go a little faster. Make send these long shots a little easier. Get some big crow damage on Haze. As you can see, by the money, we're, we're a couple hundred bucks. We're each a couple hundred bucks above them, so we're doing pretty decent. Not like a landslide victory or anything, but we're not doing bad. I got some other stuff that fell off the truck. Get a little mystical burst action going on. That's mostly for my ult. I'm not even sure if my three procs it. Maybe it does, but I, it's it's definitely mostly for the ult. Absolutely with this, 100%. Don't want to let it discourage me though. I'm like, whatever. Early deaths happen. I thought I could get that IV. I was wrong. No big deal. Never underestimate turret damage early game. Always underestimate turret damage late game. These late game turrets are like nothing. Like you can literally just stand under them and dive. Like I think they need to up the turret damage a little bit, especially towards your base. Like those two turrets that guard the door to your base, they're, they're nothing. You kill them in like five seconds. No one hides from me. But games are already pretty long, so I don't know. I see if I can hit some poke up here. I get poked back. I didn't realize that I uh, I haven't bought the auto upgrade or the uh, the auto reload thing for the jump yet. So I had to manually reload and kind of threw me off. Get a big kill on Ivy. We, we're going for this haze. Warden's going way harder for the haze than I am. I was kind of like, just let her get away, but... Warren chases her down and kills her. I was a little gun shy after that first dive killed me, so I was kind of just like, let's live and let live with this I haze. But Warren wasn't having any of that. And I applaud him for that. Go ahead and buy healing right here, finish up my T1s. We come over here and do this camp together. Give him a little little thank you tea bag, helping me with the camp. Haze hits a big sleep on me. Doesn't really get to follow up on it though. Just a little poke. I really hope they try to ride. I was seeing if I wanted to maybe buy another T1. Probably not though. 
I'm just like, eh, I'm 250 away from the T2. I'll just save it. Teammates kind of start falling apart here a little bit. Boom. Big kill on that IV. Haze was just a little late on that dagger. If maybe like 0.2 seconds earlier, she might have been able to save that IV. I buy long range here. I usually buy a uh, bullet lifesteal first, but I'm feeling pretty good. And I already have healing right, so I'm like, whatever. I'll buy the long range one. Now I have less fall off on my bullets. Less damage fall off. Kind of just letting that haze poke me. I was kind of spacing out. Thought I could maybe hit her back with the stake and I missed. No big deal. Drop back and use my healing right. Kind of miss a big, a big, uh, a big rave in there. If I could have hit both of them, that uh, would have been some pretty decent poke. It would have bounced back and forth, kind of like, uh, kind of like old fiddlesticks. Hit that huge punch around the box. That's the first time I've ever done that. I've seen uh, other YouTubers do that, where they charge up around a corner and they kind of slide around, almost like you're playing Killer on Dead by Daylight, where you can kind of slide your melee around. So I tried that for the first time, it worked. I felt pretty good. Immediately get that double kill on the Ivy too. Now I go for slowing bullets. Like I said last video, I don't ever buy boots. Maybe I should. I definitely get a little punished later a couple of times for not having any kind of boots, so. And then something to look forward to. I don't know what happens. I swear it's the game's fault. I die here eventually. This is much later into the game, but I'm just frustrated about it. Because it might be my fault. Maybe watching this replay, I'm like, oh, that was clearly my fault. But uh, I, I remember very distinctly being like, I think the game just killed me here. We'll talk about that when it happens. I miss a big ult on Infernus. End up just uh, warding them once I'm down. That's one of those things where maybe some communication would have been good, because if I hit my ult, I would have got extra souls for us. So, that would have been a win-win. We both would have got more souls if I ulted them, but it's whatever. We're just two strangers trying to trying to get by in the world. Hit her with a big, a big stake. I thought I could get the snipe, but she ended up gargoyling it. She turned to stone, blocked the bullet, healed a little. I'm not backing down. This haze just non-stop pokes me, which is probably good. I mean, that's probably what you should be doing, but it was really annoying. <laughs> Speaking of annoying, end up whiffing that last shot on the ivy, so she gets away. I probably should have just unsniped and just m wonder, but You'll be the last one standing. that kind of speed will come in time. So now I bought the uh, bullet damage lifesteal, so now hitting people with bullets give me more uh, heals you. Pretty big on, uh, pretty big on Vindicta. She do be like shooting people. Head over here, see if I can do a little gank. I don't know why this guy solo ulted. He dove towers to solo ult a full health in Infernus. I don't know what that was about. Totally end up not realizing I didn't have any charges on my ult left. Hit him with the crow though. He got greedy. He went for the uh, souls in the barrel. That let my crow land on him, get an easy kill. This is going to be a uh, a big theme in this video. Is this mo just popping out of the ground out of nowhere and ulting me? Doesn't quite work yet. He doesn't have enough damage. I kind of have a decent amount of damage. I'm 2k souls up on him, so I have a pretty... I haven't really spent them. I have 2,000 souls in my inventory, so we're basically even. But uh, that will not be the case in future attempts. So I just got the uh, bullet resist soul shredder thing. So dealing soul damage also shreds bullet resist. That's really big. I think it's big for Invicta. I mean, it might be a total waste of a buy. I don't really know, but I think it feels really good on her. Especially combined with her max rank 2, which I just did. I have an 
So now my bullets, every bullet that hits will deal extra spear damage and it will shave off bullet resist for the next bullet that hits. It's an endless cycle of just dealing spirit damage, lowering their bullet resist until you kill them. Hit him with the big three there, Warren finishes her off. Me and Warren are working pretty good together this game. I was happy to have him as my lane mate. Uh, the seven on the other hand up there, you see he's 5k behind everybody. Not doing too hot. The 7 definitely drags down the game a bit, big time. But he's probably learning just like we are. I'm just a little faster learner. <laughs> snarf, snarf. Taking flight. I see a fight happening over here. If you're looking for mercy, my friends, I'm afraid it's in short supply. I'm looking for Grey Talon. I cannot find him anywhere, so I kind of just give up. Summoning crows. For a salvation that will not come. Warden kind of just jumps in there alone, just like 3v1 for some reason. But, fun fact, it actually works. He gets all three of them low, I come in with a huge crow. Get her. Now it's just me and Grey Talon. I kind of just want to leave. I'm like, dude, come on. I hit him with a little crow on his way down. Kind of just to scare him off me. He chases a little bit, but... This is a terrible move, by the way. I don't know why I do this. I, like, panicked. I thought this looped around your base. But it does not. It loops towards Grey Talon. I don't get punished for it. If Great Talon kept chasing me, he definitely could have punished me there, but no punish for me. We live in interesting times, don't we? Get a little heal going. I'm buying my first tier three burst fire. When you hit somebody with a bullet, your gun, your ammo or whatever speeds up, so. Feels really good. Feels really good. Dirty Mike and the boys. That's funny. You're going to notice a big trend up top. Uh, the right side of our team does pretty good this game, and the left side of our team kind of act like they've never touched a mouse and keyboard before. I feel like that shift pops off a little bit later, but... It is definitely a very distinct split. And how well this game is going for our team right now. They cower before us. Finding them. Pin down that ivy. I'm starting to get pretty good with the stake, honestly. Everyone's I wasn't a big stake fan when I first tried Vindicta. I was kind of like, eh, I like the two and the three and the one and the four. They're kind of just there. But now I'm kind of really unlocking her full kit now, slowly but surely. I'm starting to get some good stakes. I'm starting to get some good snipes. Mo jumps out of the ground. That freaking disarm lasts forever. I'm still disarmed. I'm like amazed. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm still disarmed. And to pin that sign with my crow. Seven's in there super deep for some reason, even though he's so far behind. Get a little poke damage on Grey Talon. This Moe's just in here, going hard in the paint. My team just completely died. I had no I thought we were winning this fight. I was very wrong. So I'm kinda of taken by the surprise that we lost that fight so hard. Abrams is just like impossible. When he uh when he gets like fed, he's just unkillable. It's like he reminds me of Echo from League. 
Like, if Echo gets fed, he just runs at you in a straight line and kills you. And it's the same thing with Abrams. If Abrams gets fed, he just runs at you, and he just kills you. Like, there's there's almost nothing to do, really. I'm sure there's stuff to do, but stuff I don't know yet. Some of these activatable items I keep hearing so much about. End up staking this ivy again. She goes stone. Hit her with the old crow. I think, yeah, we Wraith chases her down and kills her. They delivered the urn. This Infernus is, I don't know, it's so weird. Like, every time I fight him, he doesn't seem very good. And every time he fights one of my teammates, he kills them without question. So I don't know if Vindictus is just good against Infernus or if I was just lucky, but this Infernus just manhandles my team constantly. And yet he never really does anything against me, so I don't know. It's just one of those things. We get a nice push here on the walker. Locked and loaded. My two and my three are both maxed, so your flight and your crow are both maxed, so now I'm maxing my ult. Getting more points in your ult isn't it really a huge deal. Nice snipe right there, dude. Speaking of ult, all it does is it gives you a little more cooldown, a little more damage, and then extra souls when you execute somebody with it. That's really it. So it's not like a huge change. Take down another walker. We're feeling pretty good here. They have a uh, gold lead up on us, but it's not that much. The map is pretty even-ish. We're feeling not too bad here. I'm hunting this mo for some reason. Oh no, I was looking for this. I've never found this before. That's why I did the little tea bag. I was happy. I'm like, I've literally, I've heard that there's a little shop between the two middle lanes. I've never been able to find it. So I found that for the first time, so that was kind of cool. This is just the beginning. Just cleaning up some waves here. I might get a Kelvin game going here eventually too, because I really like Kelvin as well. And I have some crazy Kelvin games where I just completely pop off. So that'll be fun to do. Oh, I end up bouncing into the wall. I kind of want to just go back, but our teammate just jumps in. Shiv goes hard in the paint here. Boom. Shiv ends up dying, but we get the double kill, so it's worth. I mean, our team gets the double kill. I know I know, I didn't kill the Abrams. I'm not that narcissistic. Looks like we're doing a 4v2 over here on this Infernus and Mo. Abrams is a punch monk. What? Oh, that's weird. I didn't know I had any... Uh, I don't remember seeing any chats this game. Maybe I have something like disabled where I can't see other chats or something. Or maybe I just wasn't looking up at that time. Thought I could maybe tiptoe a little crow around that corner, couldn't do it. Uh, maybe somebody would take a step out. Nope. No dice there. And this Mo is coming straight for me. I just don't know it yet. Other team, like I said earlier, mechanically, maybe we're a little better 
on a micro scale, but the other, the other enemy team, they just work together way better than we do. So, right there. I don't know why I spun around. And, boop, happens again. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know if I'm, uh... Can you not turn around when you're on the rail? I thought you could turn around. Maybe the, uh... Because there were no minions under it, maybe we lost control of the rail. I think that might be a mechanic. So, I don't know. I don't know if it was me turning around caused me to fall off, or if it was the... We had no minions under the rail, so we lost control of the rail. That's possible. Either way, man, I was like, I was pretty annoyed. I was like, uh, this game just 100% killed me. Now, is it the game's fault, or is it my misunderstanding of mechanics? That's the question. I don't know. Either way, that was a pretty annoying death. I kind of tilt off here and die like a few times on repeat because that happened. But that's part of the MOBA experience. This Warden kind of tilts too, because me and this Warden were both doing really good up until right around this point, and we both just start dying on repeat. Totally missed the door there. I was a little afraid something I was gonna get like slept, which I do get slept, but I ended up getting behind my turret, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, dude, I totally forgot to mention what I've been buying. I bought Headhunter Tier 3, I bought Pristine Emblem Tier 3, and I bought Longshot Tier 3. So, more headshot damage, more damage above 50% health, and more damage at a farther range. Find another tier three here. Good luck completing the ritual. I get tier three cooldown reduction just so I can uh, throw out these crows a little more, throw out these ults a little more. Oh, I should have chased. Oh no, there's an ivy there. I was like, why didn't I chase that gray talent? So ivy was right there. It would have been a two v one. I might have been able to win, but we're kind of falling behind here, and we don't want to risk it really. But when you're falling behind in a MOBA, that is when you should be going for the crazy plays, though. So as you can see, we're about $30,000 behind. The game's starting to look a little unwinnable. Unwinnable. I mean, all games are winnable, obviously. Shout out T1, but... You can see that 7 dragging down our team big time. Just dying on repeat. Not really farming. You don't have to be good at MOBAs. Just be smart. Like, just stand in the back. Don't get caught out. Like, you don't have to be mechanically gifted to not die on repeat in a MOBA. People who die on repeat in MOBAs just aren't... They aren't playing correctly. It, they don't have worse micro. I mean, they could have worse micro. But... They're dying on repeat because they're just not paying attention or they're not playing very well. Like me, I kind of give up here a little bit. I'm like, whatever. I knew I was going to die there. See, that's a death that shouldn't have happened. I should have responded to that way sooner. It had nothing to do with his micro being way better than my micro. I just wasn't paying attention and he just got the jump on me. That's how you die and repeat on a MOBA. Is you just you stop paying attention, you stop playing so quickly. I bought my tier 3 Mystical Burst here, so now our ult does more damage. With how seldomly I actually ult, I might maybe start putting the, uh, maybe start the tier 3 spirit items, maybe lead them, leave them for a little bit later, because I don't really ult that much anyway. But maybe I'll start ult getting ulting better. So you just heard a bunch of beeps. We just lost everything. 
They just absolutely sieged us. They killed our whole team. Mm -hmm. They killed all of our stuff. Not much we could do about it. We're all kind of just getting, none of us are playing together. We're all kind of just meandering about. We're getting caught out constantly. I don't think we're, all six of us are probably not alive for half this game. I feel like one person's always caught out and just always getting killed. But I do pretty good. And that's really all that, really all I care about for right now. Once you learn how to uh, leverage your lead for a bigger lead, then me getting kind of fed early will definitely be better for the team. But for right now, I'm kind of just trying to learn with everybody else. The birds will do it then. Totally with that bird. I should have seen that this was going nowhere fast. I should have left way quicker. Mo gets me again, Mo ults me again, again, my fault. I kind of just gave up mentally at this point. We should have, uh, we should have dipped out of that fight way sooner. Our teammate was really close to die dead as soon as we got into that fight. It was a 3v2, basically a 3v1 because the seven's worthless, so I should have just left. Now I'm gonna be saving up for Ricochet here. I actually end up getting pretty deep into my build, which is surprising because we're losing kind of hard, but like I said, I was keeping up. There's Siege in our base. They're getting the urn. They're doing basically all the right stuff. We've actually come back money-wise. Uh, we were about $30,000 down, and now we're only about 9,000 souls down. So honest to God, we actually came back pretty hard. Like, I'm not going to lie. Being 30,000 souls down and then coming up to like 9,000 souls down is pretty good on our part. Our seven just keeps dying on repeat. The second he leaves base, he dies constantly. I don't know why he just doesn't change anything. You know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So I don't know why he didn't just try to stick with the team, why he kept going off on his own. But that's just one of the many mysteries of MOBAs. Get a stake down on Hayes, make sure she can't go anywhere. I think the warden probably had her anyway, but it doesn't doesn't hurt to help your teammates out. I'm under attack. They're not catching me. Summoning crows. My shooting looked a little wonky there because I kept trying to stake her. I didn't realize that the uh, that my stake was on cooldown, so I'm kind of just like hitting one and barely tapping M1. We get ricochet here. Massive power spike. Is it the right move on Vedicta, though, for the first tier 4? I don't know. I really don't know. I'll find a place to snipe. Stay put. I might start experimenting with some other T4s instead. Like, I like Siphon or whatever, where you, uh, your bullets slow them down. And I already have slowing bullets, so that'd be like a double slow, so that's pretty good. Then, as far as my other one, cannot remember what my other tier 4 is on the top of my head. Taking flight. You're not getting so I stake this mo down, he starts freaking out. He ends up getting away with like barely any health. Found this out. Apparently you can't be up on this top roof. I'm like, what the hell is happening? 
So you get hit by lightning if you stay up on this top roof. So there goes half my health because I literally didn't know what was happening. Boom, get a good little double snipe on Haze. I'm kind of just farming this Haze at this point. Taking out all my frustrations of this match on her. The spirit urn is waiting to be claimed. I probably should have stayed with uh, Warden more in this match. I don't know why he wasn't staying with me. I think he should have been staying with me since he's more like a support type character with CC and stuff. But on the other end of the spectrum, I could have stayed with him. Maybe the match would have gone differently. It's possible. You never know. But I mean, me and him are working together really well in lane. We're the two best people on our team, so it would have made sense for us to stick together. And these matches are long, dude. They get to you mentally. No running. And on the opposite spectrum, dude, league matches these days feel like nothing. I feel like every single league league match ends by 15 these days. Aver manhandles me a little. Pop. Massive ult. Ouch, I type out ouch there. Kind of a dick when I'm behind. Kind of a dick when I'm ahead too. I'm really surprised I only killed the Mo there. I feel like my ricochet bullets just weren't really ricocheting there. I had three people ulted. I was just laying into that Mo. And the other two kind of escaped completely unscathed, which is weird. Get some big damage on Ivy. I think about chasing her, but then I'm like, eh, I'll probably get uh I'll probably get daggered by Haze and get killed or something, so I'm like, whatever. Whatever. I will lead by example. Like I said earlier, dude, this Infernus has just been manhandling my team this like whole game. And yet, anytime I face him, I kind of just kill him pretty easily, or I kind of poke him away from me. So I don't know what my teammates are doing to get manhandled so badly by him. Do a little jungle farm here. This place, jungle farming is kind of dangerous as Vindicta, because a lot of your strength is your two. You can just get the fuck out of there so quickly. Like, the second somebody jumps on you, you can just two, and you're like 50 feet up in the air. Where up in this church, you would definitely be trapped. Plus, I'm pretty sure this happens later, maybe. If you hit something on your way up as Vindicta, I think you, it cancels your two. So if you twoed in that, uh, there's Siphon Bullets. That's what it is. Siphon Bullets is my other tier four. So that means, so hitting somebody with your bullets lowers their maximum health and raises your maximum health. And then if you kill them, you keep a portion of that maximum health that you stole. And I think, I don't know if they, I don't think they permanently lose a portion. I think you just permanently gain a portion of the max health you stole. Again, not 100% sure if these are the best tier fours on Vindicta. These are just what I buy. Again, nice little double kill on Infernus and Ivy. As you can see on the map, Seven, again, is by himself, way out in the middle of nowhere for no reason. Main Warden sticking together here for a minute. So we are down to a two or a 4,000 soul deficit from about 30,000 souls down to 4,000. Pretty good, pretty good. The seven dies for literally no reason. I want to keep pushing here, which is probably dumb. Warren's like, nah, let's dip. I'm like, fine, we'll dip. And then this happens. I don't know what the hell this is.
I just wouldn't fucking attach to the thing again. I know that when you get hit, there's like a little like buffer where it's like 1.5 seconds, you can't like attach to the thing, but I, I'm almost positive that ended. I just wasn't attaching to it for some reason. I'm almost positive that damage buffer ended. This is a long one, dude. So, enemy team, they're just in our pit, absolutely destroying our base. Bad stake there, but game's basically over. Kind of just do a frustration snipe here, even though he's full health. And we lose. I throw out the GG because I'm not a monster, obviously. Um, definitely a bad game from our team. Um, Seven kind of ruined the game for us. Wraith kind of ruined the game for us, but you'll have that. MOBA is a team-based game. That's how team-based games work. But I did pretty all right, so I don't feel too bad about it. 28 KP, dude, that's pretty good. Only five deaths. I'm just getting better every game. So hopefully lots of victory in the future. You guys have a great day.